So I want to talk about a couple of properties of matrices, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how they relate to commutative, associative and distributive laws which can be associated with them. Because these can lead to a couple of identities that are very useful for us to know and a couple of properties that we need to bear in mind when we're working with matrices so that we can do our calculations a bit more efficiently. So a couple of big properties that we want to associate with matrices and we want to remember. First one being that AB does not equal BA. So if we multiply the matrix A by B, we don't get the same result as if we do B multiplying A. So the commutative law doesn't hold in general for matrices. There's maybe one or two rare examples where it does hold, but pretty much all the time we're going to take it to be that that doesn't hold. What we also know is that the transpose of A times B is the equivalent of the transpose of B times the transpose of A. This is what's called the transpose reversal rule. So bear that in mind, it's not the transpose of A times the transpose of B. Now that would be the logical step to take. We actually turn it round and do the transposes in the opposite direction. What we also know when it comes to matrix multiplication is that the associative law holds. So if we do A bracket B C, that's the equivalent of doing A B, then multiplying it by C. So it doesn't matter which way around we do those in, we should still get the same result when we're doing it. We also know the distributive law holds for matrices uh, when we're looking at matrix multiplication. So if we do A bracket B plus C, so if we add B and C and then multiply by A, that's the equivalent of multiplying it out and doing A multiplied by B, A multiplied by C, and then adding them together. So the distributive law holds for this. We also need to know a couple of special matrices. These are called the identity matrix. Now a 2 by 2 identity matrix is given here and a 3 by 3 identity matrix is given here. The key property is that the main diagonal of the matrix is all ones and every other element within that matrix is a zero. So this is what's called the identity matrix. Now this comes into play a lot when we're looking at a couple of key properties associated with matrices and it allows us to work through systems of equations such that if we can get a system of equations down to this identity matrix here, what we're able to do is just straight away read off the solutions for x, y and z. So it comes in handy when we're working with something along those lines. Now there's also a couple of big properties that I want to talk about where we can use the fact that these, three, these four laws work <coughs> in tandem with matrix multiplication. The first one's when you ask yourself, right, what happens if I simplify A bracket A plus B, take away B bracket B minus A. Now if I were to do that, what I could do is treat it as if it was brackets and multiply them out. And I'd have A times A plus A times B. Make sure you get the order the right way around here. That's saying I'm going to take away B times B. And then that's going to be negative B times negative A. So that's again going to be plus BA. Now these here, the A times A and the BB, that could be written as A squared and B squared. So that would give me A squared plus AB minus B squared plus BA. Now remember what we said earlier, AB and BA, they're not equal to each other. So we can't simplify any further and that's what we get. So if we were to look at expanding the brackets and doing it in the steps at the start, that would be the equivalent of doing the calculation at the bottom and just simplifying it and getting everything together once we've done each of those. A second key result is if we take any matrix Q, what we're able to do is calculate Q squared and write it in the format of A times Q plus B times the identity matrix, where A and B are real numbers. So they're scalar multiples of a combination of two matrices. Yeah, so we can write it in that form. So let's imagine, I'm going to show you an example of this. Let's imagine I've got Q equal to 2, negative 1, 3 and 5. And I want to find an expression for Q squared in the form we just talked about. So if I was to do Q squared, that would be the equivalent of doing 2, negative 1, 3, 5 times the 2, negative 1, 3, 5. And again, matrix multiplication, because it's squared, doesn't change. Yeah, none of that changes. So we'd still have our rows and we'd still have our columns. So my top entry here would be first row, first column. 
that would be 2 times 2 plus negative 1 times 3. First row, second column, that would give me 2 times negative 1 plus negative 1 times 5. Second row first entry would be 3 times 2 plus 5 times 3. And then bottom right one would be minus 1 times 3 plus 5 times 5. So there we go, we've got that. What I can now do is simplify each of these. So this one here would be 2 times negative 1. So 2 times 2, so it would be 4 plus negative 1 times 3, so that would be 1. So I'd have 1 there. What I would then have here as well is I'd have 2 times negative 1, so negative 2. Take away 7, eh, take away 5, sorry, would be negative 7. I'll get the right numbers. Then we've got 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 5 times 3, so I've got 6 plus 15. That's 21. And I've then got negative 1 times 3, plus 5 times 5, so I've got negative 3 plus 25. So that there then gives me 22. So what I've now got is I've got this here. Now I know that I want to write it in the format of q squared is equal to a times q, so it's going to be a times 2, negative 1, 3, 5, plus b times the identity matrix, so 2 by 2 identity matrix, b times 1, 0, 0, 1. So if I multiply these and combine them together, what I'll end up getting is 2a plus b, in the top left entry. I'll then get minus a here. I'll then get 3a as my bottom left entry. And I'll then get 5a plus b as my bottom right entry. What I can then do is use this to solve each of these. So if I compare, for example, the bottom left and the top right, I'll have 3a is 21. So a is equal to 7. But I also get that negative a is equal to negative 7, so a is equal to 7. So the good thing is I can check my result. So I've checked that a is equal to 7 and it holds for those. What I can then do is solve here for both of these using the fact I know what a is and just using it as a check. So what I now know then is that I've got 2 times 7 plus b equals 1. So I've got b plus 14 equals 1, so b is equal to negative 13. And if I then check doing this one here in the bottom, what I end up getting is 5 times 7, so I get 35, plus b is equal to 22. Solve that, and again I get b is equal to negative 13. So again, I've got my solution for b, but then I've been able to check it with the second equation there. So I now know my a and my b, so for this one, I can then write, therefore, q squared is equal to a times q, well, a is 7, so it's going to be 7 times q plus b times the identity matrix. Well, I know b is negative 13, so it's then going to be minus 13i. So there we go. I've been able to write it in that format there. So we're able to use this fact that we can rewrite the matrix in terms of q squared. Now, this means I can then... If this was part of a bigger picture and a bigger equation, or a bigger calculation involving matrix multiplication, I could use this fact to rewrite Q squared so that I'm able to use it a little bit more efficiently. You know, because what we may find is that BI occurs in several um, forms of it. So if we were thinking of the first one, the A squared and had a minus B squared, what I may find is that the BI for both of those is the equivalent, so I'll get bits that cancel out. But again, it all just depends. Yeah, but this is a key thing that we have to remember, is that I'm able to write it in this format here, and this explains how we go about it. One last thing is that orthogonality of a matrix is important. Now that occurs if I take the transpose of A and multiply it by A. That should give me the identity matrix. And this is one of those examples where I can swap it around and do A times the transpose of A. So this is one of those rare examples I mentioned earlier when I said in general it doesn't work if you switch the two of them around. For orthogonality of a matrix, this occurs. Now let me give you an example of this. Let's imagine I've got the matrix A 
being 0 0.8, 0 0.6, negative 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. What I have to do first is take transpose of it. So I take A dashed. What I'll end up getting for that is my diagonals stay the same. So I've got 0 0.8 and I've got 0 0.8. And I'll swap the two diagonals. So I get negative 0 0.6 and then 0 0.6. And if I then do A dashed A, what I'll end up getting is 0 0.8. <coughs> negative 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. That's then going to be multiplied by my original matrix, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, negative 0 0.6, and then 0 0.8. And then we just go through it again, as we normally would with matrix multiplication with our rows and our columns. Follow the normal set of rules that we would for that. So I'd get 0 0.8, times 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6 sorry, plus negative 0 0.6 times negative 0 0.6 top right entry that would then give me 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 plus negative 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 this entry here, bottom left, would give me 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 times negative 0 0.6 and then the bottom right would give me 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 Now if you look at the two diagonal bottom left top right they would cancel I've got 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 take away 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 in both of those so that would equal 0 in both of those ones there. And if you then go through the calculation of 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, so 0 0.8 squared plus the 0 0.6 squared. Remember, these are two negative 0 0.6s. What you'll end up getting for both of those is 1. So I get 1, 0, 0, 1. So transpose of A times A gives you the same answer is the identity matrix. Now if I was to reverse them and do the same heat the other way around, what you'll notice is the entries are the same. The only thing that changes is the signs in the diagonal. However, when we do it, because this sign and this sign are opposite and they've traded there, when I actually go through it, the signs, all that will happen is this one will be 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. And this will be negative 0 0.6 times negative 0 0.6. So the only thing that will really change is these two calculations will swap. These will stay the exact same, so they'll be 0 each, and both of these will then give me 1. So switching it around, my A times the transpose of A will give me the same answer, which is the identity matrix there. So if a matrix is orthogonal, it follows that rule with multiplication. So these are just a couple of other key rules that are associated with multiplication, looking at the three main laws that we've got there, so the associative, distributive, and commutative laws, and then talking about orthogonality within a matrix and how we can use it and what the proofs of them are.